And it's good to be back in Fairfield. And from what I can see, Fairfield is a thriving city. I'd like to make a special thanks to Lee Gobble to say hello, an old friend. And when I drove into town last night, the sign said, now in the city limits of Fairfield, there was a little sign on the bottom that said, it's still Gobble's country. <laughs> First, I want to thank the voting board for giving our friend Gene this befitting honor. Today, I have the honor to represent all of the Parsons alumni from the College Jump Club, the Sharpshooters. Today, I am here to have a celebration of the life of an American hero. My friend and fellow Parsons student is Gene Timmerman, a local Fairfielder and a very successful entrepreneur. Gene has a beautiful wife, Marsha, and two children, Brent and Brittany. One of our club members, Dave Furling, a Parsons student, put together a short collage of pictures of Gene's life, which is running in the background, and we gave a handout so that you don't have to try to read all the writing. When I met Gene early in 1964, it was quite apparent that Gene was able to bridge the divide between the townies and the Parsons students. He was well respected by the locals. When Gene started the sharpshooters with a couple other students, the town folks used to come out to the airport to see who the nuts were that were jumping. Gene took our club to be one of the largest in the United States. At one point, he taught five girls that were Parsons students to jump, the largest amount of women in the United States. Jumping was, at that time, in the very early stages of sport parachute. Gene, with his leadership ability, was able to make you feel safe and confident that if you made a jump, it was going to be okay. Club member Tony Strowman said that he was making one of his first jumps and that he was up in the plane and was scared. Gene, with that famous smile on his face, looked back and said, You are not scared, you are concerned. Gene grew up in Fairfield. His father, O.E. Sr., better known by the students that knew him as Big O. Gene kept him humble. Gene was a rebel. But all of us that knew his dad treaded on thin ice. He was a farmer's farmer. His mother was always known as mom to all the students. When the Timberlands moved into town, she used to make sure all the students living in the surrounding houses could always come over for a meal. Some of us were very lucky to go to Jean's farm for dinner, and such she could whip up some real home cooking, and there was always homemade pie and ice cream. I cannot imagine living in a world without an American hero like Jean. When Jean played football, for Fairfield High School, he was like the Larry Zonka of the Dolphins. When Gene had the ball, he was like a train plowing through the opposing team, hence the nickname he grew up with, Train. What makes Gene stand out among his peers was that he was determined to do great things. He had the drive that he was going to be successful. Underneath that large, rough frame was a gentle giant. He always stood up for the small guy. In the middle 60s, Gene had the call was time to volunteer for Vietnam. He served with one of the most famous combat units ever, the 101st Airborne Division. Gene rose to the rank of Staff Sergeant and was highly decorated. Unfortunately, little did Gene know, he brought home a dormant sleeper cell called Agent Orange, which finally took our friend, husband and father at an age when he wasn't able to enjoy his hard work. He passed too early in life. When he came home, he was determined to be assigned to the United States Army Parachute Team, a select group of military men that went around the world as roving diplomats. This is a very elite group of men in the Army bringing goodwill on parachuting shows around the world. When Gene separated from the service, he was on a new challenge, go out to the real world and become a successful businessman, from which reading a bio on him he never said, I can't do it. He was a very private person, but he always listened and then learned. Gene worked for a food company and was instrumental by himself bringing in the Army Air Force Food Exchange accounts and went ahead and also occurred the National Pizza Hut account to his company. This was so big that Rich Foods had to build another plant to handle all the new business. Because of his outstanding aggressive business savvy, Gene had attained a position as National Chain Sales Account Manager. This is why I believe Gene deserves this award. 
Here's what I think Parsons was all about. Leaving and to be able to adopt to any and all challenges and obstacles that were there. Marsha, Brett Ridley, I am proud and humbled to, honor, to, to, to give you this honor on behalf of the voting board and all the rest of us. With this honor today, which makes Gene stand out among his peers one more time, to our friend and leader, Gene Timman, this honor is for you. Accepting the award today for Gene is his wife, Marsha, his son, Britt, and his uh, daughter, um, Brittany. I'm sorry. If they would please come up. Thank you.
went to the ball after all. And the prince came seeking her following the ball. There we don't know what happened afterwards, but we assume that uh, there was marriage and children. And I think after having listened uh, for the last three years now uh, to the accomplishments of many of the graduates of this school, that the sons and daughters of Parsons College could hold their home with the sons and daughters of any other institution in this country or abroad. I don't think it really matters very much when you come right down to it if you have the right stuff. Whether you went to a famous university in a major city or whether you went to a little known college in a little known village, and we don't have villages in Iowa, we have cities, uh, a little known city uh, in Iowa. It is what you have to bring to the school, what you get from it, and take away. And so I think the honorees of the last three years are very representative of Parsons College, but there are also many of your fellow alums who have not gotten the honor, who have also done very well, have made themselves welcome in communities all over the country. Mrs. Walter recalls in her book that most of the graduates of the school stayed in Southern Iowa. But we know, and you know, uh, that the graduates of this college are all over the world. And I'll just give you one example. Uh, a few years ago, the mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, was a graduate of Parsons College. I met him just briefly one time when he was on the campus. Please don't ask me later what his name was, because I've gotten to that stage in life where names slip in and out, and I can think of it in the middle of the night. But uh, at any rate, the point is that you are everywhere, and you have made your mark in your communities, your state, and country. And so I think all graduates of the college are to be congratulated for what they have done and accomplished. Well done. Thank you. As many of you remember, especially those in the 50s, you had required chapel. And I don't know if you can graduate unless you attended. As we got into the 60s, I think my track record was as a freshman, I missed one. And when I was a senior, I made one chapel service. So whether that was the trend or not, but as part of our outreach to preserve and maintain the memory, the Bar High Organ has been a major part of the chapel for graduations, honor services held in the facility and on campus. Prior to the raising of the chapel on campus, a gentleman by the name of Mr. John Connor completely disassembled the Bar Height organ, had it stored in various places around Fairfield for 80 years, and has committed to volunteering over 2,000 hours without pay. John, would you like to stand, please, and be recognized? John began reassembling the organ in this facility here at the Sondheim Center for Performing Arts. One year ago, the second class of induction had the privilege of meeting Mr. Connick as you hear today and hear the clear tones of the organ performed on Fair, by Fairfield's own Warner Elmer. This year we have a similar opportunity and we greatly appreciate what John has done.